Hello Floss Tube. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Martinez, Fanta Stitches, and this is my Floss Tube update number 287. This is a channel about cross stitch, uh, for those of you who might be wondering. Um, and so we're going to talk about what I've been working on this week. Excuse me, just one minute. Let me pull this a little closer. Um, there was something I was going to Oh, <laughs> uh, I was thinking about my glasses um, and making sure they were, were relatively clean uh, before I started. And um, and it reminded me of, uh, there's a movie that I, I, I really love. I, I watched it several times. And it's a true story um, called Woman in Gold. Um, it's, a, it's a story of a, a, a painting that was uh, looted from this Jewish family um, in Austria. And uh, the movie stars Ryan Reynolds, if you go in, a, in a, actually a, a more dramatic role. He has some funny lines in there, but for the most part, it's a, it's a dramatic role, which is uh, unusual, you know, for because you usually see him in these, you know, sort of wise, wisecracking com comedic films or whatever. But he's really good. And, um, and, I can't think of the actress's name that, that uh, is it Helen Mirren? I think it's Helen Mirren uh, that plays this, this woman and she's like, uh, I want to say in her 80s or thereabouts uh, at, the, at, uh, at the beginning of this story. And um, of course it's, you know, condensed and, you know, whatever to, 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 make the movie but anyway there's one scene where Ryan Reynolds is is the son of a, of a friend of hers and he's uh, uh, he acts as her lawyer in this in this uh, throughout this film and when they first meet you know and they're talking about it and he's discussing you know whether or not she has a case and who you know recommending that she should you know talk to other act, other lawyers who know more about uh, art uh, uh, restoration cases, whatever. But anyway, they're, so they're they're sitting in a diner or something, and he's he's you know wearing glasses, and she says something about you know how can you see through those glasses? And she takes them off of his face, and she like spits on them <laughs> to clean them up, and then she puts them back in his face. And he's like, Wah. but that, yeah, that's what I was thinking. About. <laughs> Long way to say, I was cleaning my glasses before I started. Anyway. Um, but it's a movie everybody should see. It's it's really great. I recommend it all the time. But um, anyway, uh, uh, and speaking of recommendations, I wanted to mention before I start talking about cross stitch, uh, one of my sisters shared a TikTok video uh, a few days ago, and um, and. If you have TikTok, it's it's fun to look at, and, it, and even if you don't, I, you might be able to. Because I can, I don't have TikTok, and I can see it on, on my phone. But I'm gonna try to post the 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 link uh, in my description box. But it's of a of a cat that has, you know, how some cats vocalize, you know, whatever. And and when this cat is it has a little clip of a cat vocalizing, it's, and it sounds like he's saying that they have the you know like caption over it that. That the cat saying sometimes I'm alone, sometimes I'm not, and then he says uh, hello, and you know like, like he's trying to see you know like if anybody's listening to him or whatever, but then somebody took that that uh, clip and like made it into a song, and uh, and it's actually on Spotify also. My sister said you, you can find it on Spotify too. But uh, but so this guy took the, the 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 clip and like you know modified a little bit with a I guess with the sound uh, uh, programs or whatever. But it, so it sounds like this cat is and then he wrote lyrics you know for the song. But um, but so yeah sometimes I'm alone sometimes I'm not sometimes I'm alone hello. And then he, like he said, he he wrote a whole uh, bunch of lyrics to go with it. But it's really uh, very cute and and lots of fun and it's, you know.
anyway so that's that's just extra no charge so now I'm going to talk a little bit about my cross stitch. Um, so uh, I was working on uh, I uh, this month, uh, uh, you know, m my two Whipco whips, two Whipco FFOs, and two Whipco new starts. Right, those are my my one for each number, and also participating in uh, this summer's cross stitch camp. Uh, the uh, Colorado, Colorado cross stitcher Shelly Berger um, hosts, and it's a virtual uh, camp. You can you know join in, and you can still you know it's going to be going on. There's one challenge for July and one challenge for August, so you can still participate in all of those. And I'll put the the links. There's um, Colorado cross stitcher with a hashtag you know hashtag Colorado cross stitcher on Instagram is the official uh, uh, account where she um, keeps track of participants and all that, excuse me, participants. And also, uh, if you put the hashtag Cross Stitch Camp 2023, she'll also see that if you put those hashtags on Instagram. That's the official account. Um, if you put that on there, you know, she'll know that you're participating. But then there's also a Cross Stitch Camp Facebook group that you can join. So um, all of that is in there. And uh, so I was, I'm participating in that. So, um, so those things kind of overlap a little because of the new start that I did for uh, Cross Stitch Camp. I'm counting as one of my new starts for Whipgo. And so anyway, I've been working on all of that. So let me get to the bottom of this here. So the the whips that I was working on um, were the ones that were called for June were um, Running with the Wind, one of my ship uh, charts that I have. And I showed that last week because um, I was basically uh, done with it, had met the goal. And then... Um, the other one that was called coincidentally happened to be another one of my ship charts um old clipper ship from this booklet this old booklet uh seascapes five by tidewater originals the designers of virginia creekman this one here so uh i've been working on this chart as one of my whipgo pulls and um, I did probably like seven days just to, so I could get to a stopping point. And so I worked on the ship's hull mostly, lots and lots of black, but it's the only black in the, in the chart. So I finished it, all the black in there. And I did uh, one of the shades of gray here and all this, this blank spot, the, this line stripe going up is another shade of gray and then uh this this big chunk here is a is a another shade of gray a darker shade and then down here this these you can see the these uh points coming up there's water uh that, that uh, you know splashing up on the bottom of the sh of the ship here so there's this line of all this you know sort of frothy water waves um that go on the bottom and and you know once I do that and, and finish that uh, those stripes there uh, this bottom part will be done whenever I pick it up again and, and then I was doing I was working on um, oops, it's a thread there um, these lighter color uh, this is a, a shade of like a very light gray it's and there's a uh, shades of, of beige the, these two colors here you can see um, along this you know the lighter and the darker uh, colors here are on the edges of all of these sails um, and then the middle parts are uh, done in ecru and then the instructions in the in the on the chart say to, to do the ecru last um, and I think it's probably a, 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 a so you don't get them all dirty, I guess, I would guess, because there's no other real reason not to do them. But anyway, the, um, 
the uh, so all these little edgings, you know, in there. Some of them were done already, but I uh, did more uh, on the ends here, on this end, of, you know, going up, and uh, and some here on these sails here. And it's it's kind of funny. I was looking at it, and you know, these are old charts. They're where the symbols are hand drawn or whatever. And um, and and this particular chart is 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 split in half, right? There's the upper half and the lower half on on two pages in the booklet, and they don't overlap. There's no, you know, you usually have a lot of times now, especially you'll have um, on charts it'll say, you know, oh, you know, two three, you'll have two or three shades in in like shaded over in light gray over the over the symbols. And it'll say, you know, that's where the, the, the pages of the chart overlap. And so, you know, not to stitch the, the grayed out uh, lines, you know, but they're grayed out so that you can line them up and you can see, you know, how they overlap. And But this one doesn't have that. It has, oddly enough, these like little arrows on the bottom of the first page and on the top of the second page. So you line up the little arrows and you can see, you know, like where the two pages meet. Except that, I think, uh, like on this, um, on the picture here, you can't, you, it's a little tiny, you can't see it, but so, so the, the dividing line between the, the uh, pages of the chart is kind of like, um, I want to say it's, it's up here. Um, I can't remember where it was that I, I kind of was like fudging it because, or maybe it's, let me take a look for a second. Uh, yeah, I want to say it's like right in this area here at the top of this sail. Excuse me. Yeah. And so it's kind of like I'm holding this wrong this badly. Yeah. So the, the 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 page break is right along this line here. And so these this diagonal, you know, stair step uh line is right on that that edge. And it and the and then this little corner of the sail is also you know, part of it's above the line and part of it's below the line. And I think from judging from looking at all the other sales and looking at the picture and all that, um, that where the two pages overlap, I mean, break, um, they didn't finish, I think, didn't finish the corner of the sale here, you know, because this lighter color wasn't, didn't go all the way up to the top. It was like all of a sudden it was just blank here. Like, you know, and, and also there was one place where, uh, like one square was on the bottom of the, uh, the bottom page and the other squares were on the top page and there weren't, um, there was like a, just a break in this, you know, stair stepped lighter color and there was no real reason why it wouldn't be there. So I just, you know, kind of filled it in and made, <laughs> made it look, you know, consistent with the other shells in there. And, uh, yeah. And then also the other odd thing about this chart is that, you know, uh, nowadays, especially the charts have, a, a heavier line that shows like every 10 squares. Right. But on this chart, they do have a heavier line, but it's every 14 squares, 14. So, and I don't know why, because 14 is such an odd number as opposed to 10, you know, which is makes sense but so if you're like looking at the at the bold lines you know there it's obvious that there are more than 10 squares there it's 14 by 14. so yeah it's, it's kind of it's just kind of odd and weird you know but uh, yeah so i don't know of the i don't know the the thinking behind that but it's that that's a, an oddity about that chart but i've um so i've done the 
um, actually seven of my goal was six days and I did seven days and um, I don't know when I'll get back to it again but you know so that's old clipper ship um, and then um, my FFOs for this chart were um, for this uh, number this uh, we've go number one was stoneware snowman by uh priscilla's pocket i think i talked about it last week so i've got it like you know the, the you know i've got interfacing iron on there i i i, I got that tip from vonna pfeiffer and i and i like the idea because it's kind of puts a backing behind your stitches and if you use it i used it on the back of this fabric also because um this this backing fabric is kind of thin and I didn't use it. I have two more of these Priscilla Pocket uh, designs that I had done previously, and I had not put, you know, interfacing on the on the backing material of these pillows. And it and you, it's it's this fabric is thin, and it's you know it's not expensive fabric. It's just something I got. I think I got it at Walmart, but I don't know. But um, but the like the polyfill that I use it you know it kind of you kind of poke through a little bit you know it, it's yeah so uh, I went ahead and put interfacing on on uh, on this uh, this fabric so the so it has to be sewn and then stuffed and all that still so but it's you know pinned together that's stone no man and so while I was working on that I thought you know I've got the stoneware bunny um, because I, I was do I did it for mania. I did two days on it. And so it was almost done. I had like m part of his tail, most of his tail and this bottom part of this, f of this bottom foot here. And it was, would have been done. So it was, it was so close to be finished. I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and finish that bunny just to, to, because, so I took, you know, one evening and, and stitched on it and finished it. But so there's the stoneware bunny. Also by Priscilla's Pocket. It also came in a kit as the snowman did. Um, that has the linen in it. And it had this uh, black raspberry jam. Um, I don't remember if it's... Um, Classic Color Works or... I don't think it's a weak Style Works color. I think it's Classic Color Works or General Arts. I don't know. One of those two. But so it came with this thread. It came with uh, some matching um lady dot creates pom-pom trim so this one and the snowman so they all they all go together the those the two that i already did the snowman and this bunny so i went ahead and finished it and this is the the finishing fabric that goes on that i'm using for the back of it so those i will finish my whip go when i finish that i have i have a week left <laughs> so and then my other FFO project for, for this month is my Rabbit Rabbits from, by Tracy Horner from Ink Circle. So this is, this is not a, the finished thing. This is just a mock-up of it because I was trying to show my ideas to my sister to see if you think it'll work. So this is like, you can tell it's not quite centered. But what, I, what I'm going to do is mount the the rabbit rabbit which is basically like four inches square uh mounted on foam core so i have the the foam core uh little squares so each rabbit rabbit i'm just doing three of them january Fe january february and march because those are the only three i have finished uh, when i finished stitching but so this one i did uh two years ago for cross stitch camp our first cross stitch camp. I had never stitched in silk before, so that's why uh, this is done in silk. On 32 count Murano Carré in a bunch of colors that Hobby Lobby doesn't carry anymore. Uh, but fortunately, they carried them long enough for I bought them all and, you know, and, and started all of the rabbits at least. So some of them I finished. Um, uh, the silks are classic color work silks gloriana gloriana silks um anyway so um so i'm going to mount the the stitching on the this 
on foam core. And, um, and so that's, this is January. This is, uh, February. And this is March. Oops, say down. And all these are 32 count Murano Carre. And like I said, colors that Hobby Lobby doesn't care anymore. This is Spa. And Pink Splash. You can see a little, you can barely see these little pink dots. If I can get my finger in the right place. There's one right there. You know, little pink, little pink dots, paint. And this is Fleur. These little, uh, they're painted on flowers basically because they're not on the back. But uh, these little flowers. There's a bunnies in there. And then there's another, they have some other colors. Um, rust and mustard. And... Oh, they had some plaid, uh, a gray plaid and a, a taupe uh, plaid. Um, so they used to have all those colors at Hobby Lobby, and now they the only one they seem to carry now is one called Ice, which is a white uh, color. Anyway, so I'm going to mount each one on the little foam core squares, and then um, I have these six-inch uh, circle things. And I want to put them on there, and then probably the the what we're thinking is I'll I'll uh, make some cording um, that kind of matches the you know because we thought about we I had thought about ribbon I thought about um, using the jute uh, string that uh, that came with this because there's there's twelve of these and they're the in the little kit that they come in, it's supposed to be a, a banner, you know, like you would string up so you could, you know, write somebody's you know, happy birthday or you could write whatever on them and then string several of them together to make a garland. But I thought, oh, there's 12 of them. So I don't think I'm going to use the little jute string that came with them. This is like a chalkboard material, whatever. So, um, Anyway, so I'm going to mount each square on there. And then rather than trying to find, like, I thought, well, maybe I could find a ribbon or something. But but I thought, well, you know, I had to find something that would be the right size and the right color and all that. And so rather than trying to buy a separate spool of ribbon or whatever for each one, I think I'm going to do cording. And I could do a thinner piece here to make, like, a bow maybe. And a, and a thicker piece to go around here to make a, a trim around the edge. And like I said, this is just a mock-up, so the corners are not, you know, it's not finished. I just taped it on here with scotch tape just to, to get an idea. But anyway, it'll be on there. But the thing is, what I was thinking of originally was that there's nothing on here that says what month it represents, right? And I just know because I happen to know, because I worked on them, if you did them all, you know, in one chart, like, like one big piece, um, and there's a... a a, a chart up, out there on the on Tracy Horner's uh, Ink Circle site, you know, like if you were doing them all in, in in one piece, you know, then you could put them in in month order, and you know, they'd be they'd be fine. But I didn't do them that way, and so um, so I wanted to differentiate the months to say, um, excuse me, to say which month is which and um so i was looking at lettering in the scrapbooking area and couldn't find anything the right size but then we found these little this little washi tape that has the the months on the tape so i'm going to go and incorporate that and then these little tags so the the month could go on here probably diagonally or something um or if worse came worse depending on the, the situation they could be, it could be, you know, mounted, you know, somewhere on this little disc. And I have some little stick-on bunnies. I don't know if I have enough, um, but those might go on there as well. So I'm going to, you know, experiment and jazz those up. I have a few days still to do. <laughs> but, um, 
and I'll actually I have like some smaller circles whatever that um, one other thing I, I bought was um, these pens that are um, chalk marker it says like like uh, like you could write on chalk but they're metallic a metallic ink you know um, so uh, yeah so that's a possibility as well so I have a few days to think that through <laughs> and come up with uh, what would work on there so but I think the washi tape and the little tags are definitely going to go and just the rest of it just to see how it goes. There's that. So that's my other, my WIPCO FFOs. Um, so that's uh, most of my, all my WIPCO stuff except um, my other, my second new start. And so I chose finally this Puntini Puntini What's Your Superpower is the name of the chart. And um, this is by Paula Rizzi is the, is the designer's name. And so the saying here says, um, I turn grass, yeah, I turn grass into wool. What's your superpower? And there's a little sheep there. And if you look, his body is shaped like a skein of wool, of, of yarn. And it comes with the, the, the chart comes with this little yarn button there in green yarn and it's it's all dmc except for this the green of this grass and the green it's used also up in the leaves of this tree and it's the the yarn is that's used i mean the floss that's used for the grass this green is is by romy's creation a color called camouflage but i could not find that I um I looked on like uh, one two three stitch and, and other places online and um, I found some places that carry Romy's Romy's creation flosses but not the color camouflage I couldn't find that anywhere so I finally just used um, a week's dye works color that I have already. I was just kind of looking because there's there's a DMC alternative that's po uh, that's posted, so I was using that to see if I could find you know because uh, I like the 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 you know variation you can see in, the, in you know in this this goes from dark to green it's, it's very variegated um, and I like that so I I the 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 D, the DMC alternative is 522 which is a firm green and um, so I just took that and looked at my, um, my, oh, I don't have it right here, do I? Oh, it's not handy. Um, at my, maybe I, oh, it's not there. Hold on, just one second. Hmm. Yeah. Try not to cause a crapple ant here. Um, but so I looked in my week's dye works uh, threads, and and the color I chose. I can't get this out of here. Yeah. Um, was a uh, scupperdong by Weeks. So uh, it's not quite as as strongly variegated as the camouflage is, but there is some variegation. And I, though you can't really um, see it as much in the leaves, I, I started in the upper upper left hand corner and um, started with the leaves, and it's a, they're actually a little hard to see against the brown here. Uh, but um, but <laughs> somewhere in here, I, I did the leaves by themselves because because the the leaf is in the very corner of the of the pattern, and so I thought okay well I can do because they're you know they're in clumps of four or uh, two you know two or four or whatever, and so I was doing them and then I and I was coming along and I had not made a working copy 
of the chart. I just started it like last night. I don't know. So I had not made a working copy of the chart. And so I couldn't, you know, I didn't want to mark on the chart itself. And so I was going along and I was doing well. And then I kind of lost track of where I was <laughs> or, and I, and, and lost count, I guess. And in a couple of places I miscounted. So some of this is wrong, like, like in here, right in here. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and take some of it out because I, I, you know, I was going along and I was going to put one in and, and it didn't seem like it was in the right place. And I, I, you know, I was kind of like getting a little lost. So I went back, so I stopped what I was doing and I went back and, and went to put in part of the tree. And so I still have, you know, uh, quite a bit of the tree to go back, but, um, but the more I worked on it, the more uh, I found, you know, one whole section in here that's, that I made a mistake. So I'm going to, I think, get a frog it out and uh, and redo those leaves once I get more of the, get the tree put in right so that I don't make the same mistake again. But anyway, so that's my, my second start. Uh, so I have a few more days actually to work on it between working on the... FFOs, which is probably, I'm probably going to spend more time doing that. But I'm hoping that maybe I can get this, this tree in, you know, and get that finished. Because once you get past, you know, all the branches, it's just straight, you know, straight stitching there to get, to, because that's the only place that brown is used also. And then I can do, you know, uh, the rest of it. And it's not a very big chart. It's only like 60, 66 by 62. So it's not a big chart, so I'm hoping I can get some more done. But there's only a few days left in the month. And um, it, today's the 24th, Saturday the 24th, and so the 25th is uh, uh, WIPGO Day, which is where the new numbers will be announced. Um, but the other, the other new start that I had been contemplating for this month you know, I thought, well, I, I don't really have fabric for it and all that, so I'm going to have to put it off until I can figure out what to do. Because I bought this fabric um, at Hobby Lobby once upon a time, and they don't carry uh, any uh, anything this size anymore except for Ada, and I kind of didn't want to do that um, because I want uh, what I'm going to do to match what I did before. So... Uh, so recently, I guess last month, earlier this month, I don't know, Blackbrook Angels was one of my uh, FFO uh, things because I had done all the stitching and I just put, I had put off the finishing them, right? So this is Prayer School with Blackbrook Angels. And I talked about how I really, really liked the, 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 the style of the faces and all that. And so I wanted to do Starry Night. This is a prayer schooler chart also, and it has the same kind of, of style of these uh, people. Um, there's three kings, there's a shepherd, there's the little town of Bethlehem, there's one of the kings on his castle, camel, there's Mary and Joseph and the baby uh, riding on a camel, oh, no, excuse me, on a donkey. There's a, a cow and a donkey in the manger baby Jesus in the manger, and there's an angel in the star over Bethlehem. Sorry, it's blowing it out a little bit. Uh, there. And they're that same color palette as the that one angel that I showed you last week, the, the smaller uh, little card that uh, from a prayer schooler. Um, that on that angel, there's there was blue, whereas the, the black rook angels are black and gold. So these are, the color palette is just blue and gold and black. Um, so I think these would match the Black Rock Angels very nicely, Starry Night by Prairie Schooler. So, but like I said, when I did the, when I did the Black Rock Angels, I had uh, coffee dyed, tea dyed uh, fabric for it, and it was a larger piece. So... I thought I was kind of out of luck because the, the only larger pieces I have are, are 
I think I have two of them, but they're both dyed a, a, like a light green. But this I found elsewhere in another drawer because this is 22 count. This is a 22 count Hardinger, um, but it's 30 by 36. So I think it's 22 count. It looks like it, yeah. But anyway, so, but this should be big enough. The, um, it's, it's a little, I, I had originally, uh, planned on doing it. I thought about doing it, excuse me, on this, um, this piece that I stuck the, uh, the Poutini Poutini chart on because this is like 28 count Irish linen, I think is this, this, uh, material. And I thought maybe the, the Starry Night would fit on here. It's a little hard to tell, um, to sort of calculate in the cross-stitch calculator that I use because, um, although the charts themselves are not that big, um, you know, you have to allow, uh, margin around it for finishing, right? And so I was having a little trouble sort of calculating the, the, how exactly how much, um, material I would need. And it seemed like I would need um, a few more inches, you know, at 30 something here. So this is 30 by 36. So it should be fine, even though it's a larger count. Um, it should work with, you know, if I don't make too, too big a margin between the, the pieces. And really, I don't need too much. I just need, you know, like I said, enough to, to finish. Uh, but so, uh, so hopefully I can make that work and that'll be my start for July. And then of course I'll have the two, uh, whatever the numbers are for the, for my whips for July. Should be coming up very soon. Um, and then the other thing, um, <laughs> sorry, distracted by the neighbor's roof. I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at. But the other thing that uh, is coming up is uh, July cross stitch, the July uh, challenge for cross stitch camp, which is uh, to stitch something that grows. And I'm planning on doing um, one of the, uh, I don't have it here in front of me, I showed it last week, I think, or two weeks ago or whatever. The, um, the whale, the uh, whales from, uh, it's a Noah's Ark theme, but it's all these uh, underwater things, I think. Anyway, whales. It's it's a small uh, piece also. So I should be able to finish it, I hope. Um, so that's going to end up being one of my new starts for the month of July. And um, I think that's about it. So the, the, the by the time I see you next month, it'll be July. It'll be the first first of July and I hopefully will have finished my FFO things for that I'm working on for this month and have my new WIPCO numbers to show you and um, maybe I will I'll start <coughs> excuse me the the July cross stitch uh, camp piece I plan to start on July 1st and then I have um starry night for my my second new start for the month so hopefully that'll be um that'll be that's plenty <laughs> to, to work on and i'll get the hopefully i'll get those ffos done you know trying to think through it all um not leaving myself a lot of room for for error there but um and i want to go ahead and finish you know this that stoneware bunny while i'm at it you know while i'm doing the ffoing or whatever I want to, you know, I might as well work on finishing that. So, otherwise then, I will, um, I'll see you uh, next week. Oh, and, um, oh, I wanted to talk about, let's see, I don't have any answers. Um, check out our Etsy shop. There's some new things in there for, um, uh, there's some new patriotic things, 4th of July. Um, there's also a little, a little, uh, Patriotic Dreams, it's called. The little chart um, 
of like it's it's like a you know it's a it's a small it's about you know this big finished you know um, and it's just a, like a silhouette of people looking at some fireworks in the sky. It's a nice little thing if you're if you uh, want it for a, a smalls exchange or whatever, uh, for instance. Um, but uh, so you know, check on some stuff and in the Etsy shop. We have some aliens, uh, a scissor fob and a and a and a needle minder. Um, uh, those are in there. They're new and uh, and some new uh, scissor fobs um, and a few needle ones. I think I showed them uh, last week or the week before. Last week. Um, uh, they're all up there in, in the Etsy shop now. Um, and, uh, and we should have some new uh, uh, project bags soon. Not yet, but soon. Um, Anyway, all that stuff is available in our Etsy shop, and the Etsy shop is Three Sisters Creative, the number three sisters creative, and I'll put that link, of course, in the in the description box below. Um, so I will see you next week, hopefully uh, with lots of things to talk about, and um, that's it. So, all right, until then, happy stitching, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.